Have you ever wondered what would happen if your child sneaked into a blender? Well, if you did, you're a terrible parent, but it just so happens that I've got the game for you. Who's Your Daddy is an asymmetric online multiplayer game that features two sides similar to most other games in the genre. You have the role of the daddy whose aim is to protect his baby from harming itself, and you have the role of the baby whose job it is to get itself killed. Each game only lasts a few minutes and victory is pretty straightforward. For the daddy you need to ensure that your baby stays alive, and the baby player will need to get themselves killed as quickly as possible. Now there are a ton of ways that babies can meet their demise, so it will be down to the daddy player to remove toxic objects out of arm's reach, cover up electrical sockets, as well as stopping the baby from getting inside the fridge. But but by no means are you defenceless as a baby. You'll have access to shovels to dig your way out of the playpen, punching your daddy to get him off you, and getting in your own vehicle to cause some mayhem. There are four game modes that you'll have access to. 1v1, 4v4, custom lobbies where you can create your own rule set, and split screen where you can have up to four of your buddies playing locally. You can change which server you're connected to in the main menu. That also lets you know the number of players online. Now mine was defaulted to US East despite the fact that I live in Europe. When switching to the European servers there was barely anyone playing, and that applies to all of the other servers too. So Unless the player base significantly picks up, I advise just sticking with US East for faster queue times. Crossplay is on by default. You can turn it off, but I see no reason for doing so, considering there's not a mass of people online anyways. Now you can customise your babies and daddies, changing their hats as well as their skins. For example, you can change yourself into a turkey if you're feeling festive, or a skeleton if you fear that reaper. There's a handful of perks in the game which are unlocked by default and provide slight boosts in game. Both sides share the same controls. You can sprint, crawl, jump, dance, switch to first person, and interact with objects. Now, now, there's only two maps. One of them is locked to 4v4, and the other is locked to 1v1. You also have a health meter, stamina bar, as well as stomach gauge, which rises when you eat toxic objects. You can eat food to restore your health, and stamina restores over time. As a baby player in the 4v4s, you'll start from the playpen with your baby teammates. Now, you can try to jump over the railings, but the easiest way to escape is to get a shovel and dig your way out. There's several ways to win as a baby player, so feel free to get creative, but here's a few tips to give you some ideas. You could get yourself hit by a car on the streets. Don't worry, it's their fault for speeding. You could get yourself pinned between objects objects and set on fire, and no, we're not cosplaying as the Human Torch, or you could just drown underwater. In this round I was told that an underwater buff had been applied, I unfortunately took in more water than the Titan. Playing as the daddy you can also do some wacky things, like driving around in your baby's car, restarting your health after getting assaulted by your kid, and of course some light hearted trolling. Here I'm ramming the player with a lawnmower, it was kind of stun locking them in place, now I'd hardly call this griefing, I was just using strats. There's no form of XP system, levelling up or way to track your wins or losses, but it's not a serious game. Games, this being left out is absolutely fine. The 1v1 game mode isn't as manic and slightly more enjoyable, but that didn't stop me from being stunlocked with a bat here. Now I couldn't really complain firstly because it was funny, and second because I'd cheesed my fair share of players. As previously mentioned, 1v1s use a different map, the family house. I much preferred this map's design, it was bigger, offered more room variety, and had a lot more tools that could be used. I also found this purple glow stick in the bedside drawers. Hmm. They must have liked going to festivals. Playing as the baby in the 1v1s, it's much easier to give the daddy player the slip, due to the fact that the house is bigger. In this cycle of events, I drink some alcohol, ride off to the family cat and get hit by a car, all in less than a minute. You can get punished as a daddy though. Here I had no clue that this closet teleported the baby to another location. I waited outside the closet thinking the baby would eventually come out, but this little took off and got himself smoked in the garage, and to that I say GG. I did try some custom lobbies where there was one daddy and several baby players, and it was much more difficult. Even more so when the game glitches or crashes and you're left with a black screen, and this is the true undoing of the game. The game crashed so often I would have to close the game and restart it. The frame rate would tank making the game extremely choppy at times. There was a game where I got stuck in a school bus, but I let this one slide as it was quite funny. There were several games in which players would AFK from the start of the round, or they would disconnect shortly afterwards. I believe these players were crashing and they were also getting the black black screen and needing to dashboard, and this is because the exact same thing was happening to me. In this game my controller randomly started vibrating out of control. Giggity. And I could no longer interact with objects. I was getting to the point in which a game was crashing or bugging out quite literally every single game. Even the menus were bugged, as scrolling back up on them didn't even work. I know Steam players are having these issues as well. In my opinion, this game needed performance and optimization work prior to being ported to the console. I mean, at least fix the game on Steam first. And it's a great shame because the game itself is pretty fun. I played the game for around five hours with the impression that I'd seen everything the game had to offer. Now I paid eight pound or $10 for it, 
and to be honest, I'm happy with that price point. What hampers the game is its poor performance, as at its core the game is fun, and can offer countless amounts of hours of online fun with your friends. Before the game started to crash repeatedly, I only had good words to say about it, but the constant crashes salved the experience. As much as I'd like to recommend this game, these issues need to be fixed. But what I will say is if you don't run into these problems, then it's £8 or $10 well spent on a party game of humour. Ladies and gentlemen, subscribers and non-subscribers, thank you very much for stopping by. If you enjoyed this review, go ahead and high five the like button. If you have anything to say, drop it in the comments, I will reply. And if you want to see more content just like this, then subscribe and I'll repay you with content that I know you'll enjoy. That's all I've got today, folks. Peace out. Thank you.